ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the Rishi Sunak deep fake that went viral. But first, Google has teamed up with Japan's Osaka University to create an AI tool that can reconstruct music from brain scans. It's called Music LM and takes songs like this and using data from people's brain activity as they listen to the song, recreates it into something that sounds like this. They did it by training an advanced deep neural network to match changes in brain activity with musical characteristics such as mood, genre and instrumentation as participants listened to music. They then engaged Music LM to interpret the data and reconstruct the music. As you can sort of hear from those clips, it did manage to replicate things like genre, instrumentation and mood. Next, researchers want to recreate music from people's imagination. A US federal court has ruled that Reddit doesn't need to identify users who pirate movies in an ongoing case involving the Hollywood film industry. So essentially, this is the age-old story whereby Hollywood production companies are constantly trying to catch and get rid of online piracy. Our tech journalist Mary Ann Russon says a group of 20 major film companies have been using Reddit posts to locate copyright infringers and find parties to sue and accept fault for online piracy. They realised that a lot of these people were talking about it on Reddit and people are basically saying on Reddit I use this ISP in Texas called Grande. I think it's very cool of them that they haven't said which of their customers are illegally downloading. At the moment the most that can be done to prevent copyright infringement online is compel internet service providers or ISPs via court order to block known online piracy websites. Reddit has argued that the film companies should be contacting internet service providers directly to identify the users who are pirating. Mary Ann said if Hollywood firms started targeting individual ISPs here in the UK, she's not sure how it would play out. I've not ever seen a situation where the film industry is directly targeting individual service providers. You know, could they eventually be targeting, you know, our providers like, you know, Virgin Media, Sky? If they were to target all those guys, you know, would they fold? I don't know. Deepfake technology has struck again, this time targeting the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. A Labour MP has had to apologise after sharing a doctored image of the PM pouring a pint at a beer festival. It was altered to show a poorly poured pint of stout, with a woman in the background looking disapproving of the PM's effort. MP Carl Turner said he was sorry for inadvertently sharing an image, which apparently turns out to have been fake but said, how on earth could I possibly know that the image wasn't real? Excuse me, hi, do you mind if I show you some adverts you might like? That's the conversation Meta is proposing to have with Facebook and Instagram users in Europe to settle an ongoing legal battle with the EU. In January, Meta was fined 390 million euros by the European Union's main privacy watchdog, Ireland's Data Protection Commissioner, for the way in which it collects user data for targeted ads. It was ordered to change its processes to be in line with EU rules. In a blog post which has reportedly been taken down, Meta said it plans to ask users in Europe for permission to show them targeted ads prior to collecting data for personalised advertising purposes. The standard has approached Meta for comments about whether this plan will still go ahead. It's thought the changes in the EU could have a knock-on effect for people in the UK. YouTube has made another move in its battle with TikTok. After making shorts more prominent on the platform, it's now going to offer creators new tools to turn any video into a bite-sized clip more easily. In a blog post, the platform revealed that it's improving its remix editing feature to add the ability to adjust the layout, zoom and crop of a video segment and even add split screen effects in shorts. Coming up, the country that could introduce a screen time limit for under 18s and why killer whales are learning to attack boats. Make sure you stay in the loop with the latest tech and science news during the break by giving us a follow. 
Welcome back. Chinese regulators have proposed bringing in a two-hour daily phone limit for under-18s in the country. China's cyberspace regulator wants smartphone makers to bring in a so-called minor mode, which stops users under 18 from accessing the internet on their phones from 10pm until 6am. Under the proposed rules, 16 to 18s would be allowed two hours a day, children aged 8 to 16 would get one hour, and children under 8 would be allowed just 8 minutes. It's as Chinese authorities have grown increasingly concerned about rates of short-sightedness as well as internet addiction among young people. It looks like young killer whales off the coast of Spain are learning to ram into boats by copying their elders. Scientists reckon at least 20 Iberian orcas have now learned the behavior simply by mimicking others. According to Spanish reports, the attacks began in 2020, and at least 130 incidents have spooked sailors since. But it turns out the behavior is not malicious or some kind of revenge for climate change. Marine biologist Renaud de Stefani says the ramming is just a simple game for them. And finally, in other whale-related news, an ancient whale has been given the prestigious title as the heaviest animal that ever lived. After examining the remains of a partial skeleton from a whale thought to have swam in the oceans around 39 million years ago, scientists say it was likely three times heavier than a blue whale. Based on those remains found in Peru, they estimate its body mass to have been between 85 and 340 tons. Scientists have named the species Perucetus colossus, a nod to where the remains were found, as well as its huge size. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock and search for The Leader Podcast for the latest news and analysis from the Evening Standard. We're back tomorrow afternoon at one. See you then.